in this video today we are going to study about something called a cyclotron which is a particle accelerator it is used to accelerate heavy positive particles like a proton or a deuteron now deuteron is what it is the nucleus of the second isotope of hydrogen which is deuterium now particle accelerators like a cyclotron are useful in studying nuclear phenomena or in studying the nucleus itself let us look at the construction part of it now a cyclotron first of all let me tell you it could be as big as a room or it could be as big as a house now there are other kinds of particle accelerators also which are as big as Darjeeling town or could be bigger than that too I don't know whether you've heard about large hadron collider which is the biggest particle accelerator so far if you haven't heard about it you can google it and see now coming back to the cyclotron it is made up of two hollow horizontal metallic segments in the shape of a D so therefore they are simply called D's this is D1 and this is D2 now across the two D's we have an alternating potential difference of about 10 to the power 5 volts a very high potential difference alternating potential difference applied across the two D's now not just that we also have a perpendicular magnetic field of the order of 1.5 Tesla perpendicular to the plane of the 2Ds of course so we have a perpendicular magnetic field of a very high magnitude 1.5 tesla is a very high value of magnetic field so therefore this magnetic field is also applied perpendicular to the plane of the Ds of course initially what we have is the charged particle is in between the 2Ds and say for example at this very instant D1 is positive and D2 is negative so to say there is an electric field set up between d1 and d2 now due to this electric field and the charged particle itself being positive the charged particle experiences a force and due to this force the charged particle is pushed into d2 so it enters d2 with a certain velocity now once the charged particle is inside d2 the force it experienced initially because of the electric field is no longer there why because we've already learned while we were doing Gauss's theorem that the electric field inside a charged conductor is zero inside whatever kind of a conductor it be whatever the shape of the conductor be if the conductor is charged but the electric field inside the conductor will be zero so our D2 is also charged so to say it is negatively charged at this instant so what happens is there is no electric field inside D2 so the moment our charged particle enters D2 whatever force it experienced in between the two D's due to the electric field it no longer experiences that force inside D2 but mind you when it was in between the two D's it was stationary so therefore it did not experience any force due to the magnetic field so whatever force it experienced in between the two d's was because of the electric field but now what happens is it has entered d2 with a certain velocity say v1 and there is a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of d2 also this very magnetic field b so what is happening now is our charged particle is entering the magnetic field with a certain velocity v and we know that whenever a charged particle enters a magnetic field with a certain velocity it experiences a force which tends to rotate the charged particle in a circular path this we've already seen so inside d2 the charged particle moves in a circular path like this in fact a semicircular path so it travels this semicircular path and again comes in between the 2d's now the moment it comes in between the 2d's the cyclotron is so tuned that this side now becomes positive that is d2 now becomes positive and d1 becomes negative this is how the cyclotron is tuned the moment the charged particle reaches in between the 2d's since it experiences the electric field at this new location now and it already possesses some velocity as it reaches here it moves inside d1 with a certain acceleration so to say its velocity increases as it enters d1 
But again, the moment it enters D1, it stops experiencing the force due to the electric field because inside D1 also there is no electric field. So whatever force it experiences inside D1 is solely because of the magnetic field. Now again, our charged particle is entering the magnetic field with a certain velocity. Therefore, it experiences a force which tends to move it in a circular path. But because of the increase in velocity, it now describes a circular path with an increased radius and again comes in between the 2Ds. Now the moment it comes in between the 2Ds, again the cyclotron is so tuned that the polarity of the alternating potential changes such that this side again is negative and this side becomes positive again. So our charged particle again experiences a force due to the electric field because of which again it enters D2 further with an increase in velocity the moment it enters d2 it stops experiencing force due to the electric field whatever force it experiences is solely due to the magnetic field because of which again it moves in a circular path with of course an increased radius it comes in between the 2d's the polarity of the alternating potential changes this becomes positive this becomes negative now and therefore it enters d1 again with an increased velocity because of which it describes a circular path or rather a semicircular path with an increased radius. But mind you, the moment again it enters D1, no electric field, whatever force it experiences is solely due to the magnetic field, so it describes this semicircular path. Again comes in between here, the 2Ds. Again the polarity of the alternating potential changes and thereby this story goes on and on and on. So it goes on describing semicircular paths of increased radii. So, and every time it is entering one of the Ds, its speed is increasing. So it is going on accelerating. It is going on describing semicircular paths and it is going on accelerating until it attains a desired high velocity at which point what happens is there is an opening over here a window kind of a thing so after it attains the desired velocity the charged particle comes out of this window so it's like a projectile now and it goes on to hit a desired target so this is how a cyclotron works now the radius of the semicircular path described by the charged particle inside the 2Ds is given by R is equal to mv upon qv. Where do we get this from? We have seen in the previous video that the radius of the circular path described by a charged particle when it enters the magnetic field with a certain velocity is given by this expression. Please go and check that video. So. The time taken to describe the semicircular path is given by t which is equal to pi r upon v. 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. So circumference of half the circle is pi r divided by the velocity which is pi upon v into r is mv upon qb. So therefore we see the time taken to describe the semicircular path inside the d's t which is equal to pi m upon qb. So, we see from this expression that the time taken to describe the semicircular path is independent of the velocity of the charged particle inside the Ds, remember. We've seen that every time the charged particle enters one of the Ds, it enters with an increase in velocity. But we are now seeing that the time taken to describe every semicircular path here, whatever be their radii, is the same. And the cyclotron is so tuned that this time taken by the charged particle to describe the semicircular path is the same as the time taken by the alternating potential to change its polarity. So this is how the cyclotron is tuned. So every time the charged particle is coming in between the 2Ds, the polarity of the alternating current is changing at that very instant. So to say this is a case of resonance wherein the frequency of the alternating potential that is the frequency at which it is changing its polarity is equal to 
the frequency of movement of the charged particle in the circular path or the frequency of revolution of the charged particle. So therefore cyclotron so to say functions only if this case of resonance is achieved. So if nu naught be the frequency of the alternating potential and nu be the frequency of circular revolution of the charged particle then for the cyclotron to function nu should be equal to nu naught that's a case of resonance. Now nu itself is the reciprocal of the time period. Time period is the time taken to describe one complete circle. So nu is equal to reciprocal of the time period which is equal to qb upon 2 pi m therefore and thereby nu naught the frequency of the alternating potential should also be equal to qb upon 2 pi m. Finally, let us talk about the limitations of the cyclotron. Now, a cyclotron cannot be used to accelerate particles to very high velocities, velocities which are comparable to that of light. Because once a particle starts achieving velocities comparable to that of light, what starts happening is the mass of the particle starts increasing. The mass, so to say, is no longer a constant. And this change in velocity of a body with the increase in its velocity falls in the domain of something called relativistic mechanics. So as long as the mass is constant, a body may be running with the speed of sound, but its mass remains constant. So that falls under the domain of something called Newtonian physics, where Newton's laws of motion is applicable. Once the body starts moving with a velocity comparable to that of light, Newton's laws of motion stops being valid. Then after we go to the domain of something called theory of relativity. Now in relativity what happens is a body is moving with a very very high speed, like I said earlier, comparable to that of light. And there the mass is no longer a constant. So if m be the mass of a body, then it is given by m0 divided by square root of 1 minus v squared by c squared where v is the velocity of that body c is the velocity of light and m0 is something called the rest mass of the body rest mass of the body meaning when the body is at rest simply or the mass of the body when it is moving with a very small value of speed which is not at all comparable to that of light so remember a cyclotron cannot accelerate particles to very high velocities because then the mass of the body starts increasing and thereby the frequency at which the body is describing semicircular path will go on changing and it no longer will match with the frequency of the alternating potential or so to say it goes out of step with the alternating potential and so the cyclotron stops working properly. Another limitation but a very similar one it cannot be used to accelerate a light particle like an electron. Why? Because a lighter particle has smaller mass. So therefore it quickly gets accelerated. So when it gets quickly accelerated, it very quickly also attains a velocity comparable to that of light. So when an electron attains a velocity comparable to that of light, its mass starts changing. So to say the frequency at which rate the electron is describing semicircular path will stop matching with the frequency of the alternating potential. So these are the two main limitations of a 